Sake, or rice wine, is made by fermenting rice and is considered the national drink of Japan. The oldest brewery is at Tendyuji, a Zen Buddhist temple in Kyoto, Japan. Sake was brewed at Tendyuji during the Muromachi period from 1336 to 1573. During the Meiji era, 1868 to 1912, Emperor Meiji, whose cremains are interned at Meiji Jinja in Tokyo, is credited with leading the industrial growth and modernization of Japan by encouraging industries and supporting technological development. These sake barrels are offered every year to the enshrined deities by members of the Meiji Jinju Zenkoku Shuzo Kei Shinkai or the Meiji Jingu Nationwide Sake Brewers Association. These offerings are made to show their deepest respect for Emperor Meiji and Empress Shouken. Here we have some pictures of the Gekkeikan Sake Brewery in the Fushimi district of Kyoto. Here you can see the history of the brewery dating back to 1637. The brewing of sake has not changed that much from its earliest days. Here you can see some of the artifacts of where they used to brew sake, including storage of sake, serving of sake in these tokuri or bottles for serving, and storing sake in these barrels made of rice straw. Happy New Year everyone. Today I want to share with you some sake that I enjoy, also ways of serving sake. Now this tradition of drinking sake dates back many many centuries in Japan. A ceremony called otoso is celebrated or a toast of sake on New Year's. And when otoso ceremony is performed, you use this san sankudo set. San sankudo set this set comes from Kanazawa, Japan. And the meaning of otoso varies, but some accounts say that the second character of the term otoso is the name of a demon who would terrorize villagers. The ceremony of otoso was then meant to drive away evil and give one a long life. Historically, the otoso ceremony was a sake that was medicinal and was thought to give one good health and longevity. So when families gather together on New Year's, they use this San Sankudo set to drink sake. Traditionally, the youngest will drink from the first cup, and then the oldest from the large or third cup, as it should be. Sake can be served in many different ways. It can be served hot, using this tokuri. You take and you fill this sake up with sake, and then you put it into boiling water. You want to make sure that the sake never comes to a boil. So what you do is you pick up the sake, you feel the bottom of this uh, tokuri, and when it's hot to the touch, then the sake is hot. And then you can serve the sake. Another way of warming sake is using this silver warmer. It hangs on the edge of the pot, filled with sake, and I would use my finger just to test the temperature of the sake to make sure it's hot enough. Again, make sure you do not let the sake boil. Now, sake can also be served cold, and I would suggest using one of these. This is a glass container, and you pour the sake into it, and you'll notice that there is a little container on the side that is filled with ice. This keeps the sake cold, and then you can serve it into your sake cup, like that. Okay. Now other ways of serving sake are using bamboo uh, tokuri, like this. This is used for cold sake with a matching cup. Sake is also served cold in these square uh, sake cups, and many times people will pour sake all the way to the top, and on the corner, put a pinch of salt and drink from that corner. And the salt gives it an added flavor to the sake. 
Now, over the, oh, uh, I wanted to mention also that in some cases, people will take the dried fugu fin. The fugu is the uh, poisonous fish that is served in restaurants, and the fin is used to flavor sake. It's added to hot sake. Okay. Now, over the years, as I've traveled through Japan, I search for new and different sake cups. And here are a few of my uh, my collection of cups. Uh, this one to me is particularly interesting because it has on the bottom a picture of a demon. The maker says that the true nature of man reveals himself when the cup is lifted up. This latest cup, let me take some out here. This latest cup is a gift from my brother. And you'll notice that when you pour the sake in, it reveals the cherry blossoms. Okay, that's really beautiful. Some other cups that we have include ones with the frog. These two here have frogs. This one here is a glass blower in Tokyo who made this sake cup. And this one is uh, Jane's favorite because it has the little bunny rabbit inside. You can see that. And there are many sizes and shapes of cups. Some are roughly hewn, some are very smooth and uh, beautiful, but some are very rustic looking as well. Now, these three cups are three of my favorites. We, Jane and I bought these when we were in Kanazawa. This is a gold leaf on a, a red and black lacquer. It's a beautiful cup. This one is the same from that same area. It has the dragonflies. Um, black lacquer, red lacquer. Dragonflies. This one I thought was very unusual. I bought this in to Kyoto near uh, Kiyomizu Dera. And I bought it because of its shape. If you'll notice it's wood but it's got a concave, convex kind of shape to it, so it's very unusual, but I really like that one. So these are some of the examples of some of the cups that I have collected over the years. Now there are two main ingredients in making sake, and of course rice, and then water, and then koji. Koji is the mold spores added to the steamed rice. And the rice, before it is brewed or uh, uh, made, it is polished to remove the outer husk or the bran. In almost every region of Japan brew sake using local rice and spring waters. And more recently sake is being brewed not only in the United States but in Europe. And there are special designations for sake such as this first bottle of kubota is kubota manju, junmai dai jingo, pure rice, very special brew. And that comes from Niigata. The next bottle is Shochikubai from Kyoto, Shirakabe Gura. It's a Kimoto Junmai. And the bottle next to it, Kurosawa Junmai Kimoto from Nagano. And Junmai means pure rice, but the Kimoto designation is a sake that's made using a yeast starter, made in a very labor intensive way in which the rice, the koji, and water are mashed into a puree for hours using exhausting techniques that involve mixing hard and mushing up the steamed rice grains with long poles. This helps lactic acid bacteria proliferate naturally and faster, preparing the environment for the yeast cells. It also takes more time, a month or so, rather than the two weeks needed for more common methods. More practically, Kimoto methods lead to sake that is fuller, more complex, richer, and a little bit gamier taste as well. Now the next bottle is one of my favorites. Jozen Ginjo Pink. Junmai Ginjo from Niigata. As you can tell, I am... Uh, I favor the Niigata sakes. They are uh, usually drier sakes. And there are many types of sake and individual tastes vary. Uh, sweet to dry. I prefer a dry sake. Now, 
in the winter time, um, nigori sake is produced using a larger mesh to filter the sake, resulting in a cloudy sentiment in the sake. If you look closely, you can see at the bottom there is a cloudy sediment at the bottom of this sake. This is kikusui, and this is from Nigata as well. So if you shake it up, and then it becomes a nice white, cloudy, milky type of sake. And some people don't care for the sweetness of nigori, but if you take a little bit of lemon and add it to the sake, it gives it a really nice flavor. So sake, like wine, comes in many flavors, both sweet and dry. Also flavors vary from region to region in Japan. So as you gather for New Year's, you can enjoy sake, toast with your family, and enjoy this otoso kampai uh, sake. Okay? Happy New Year everyone. Kampai. Finally, I want to share with you some other cups that I've collected over the years. These are some of my favorite ones, unusual in shape and coloring and the type of clay that is used. I also want to take this opportunity to wish all of you a happy new year as the year comes to a close. And you may want to toast with your family, not necessarily sake, maybe some non-alcoholic beverage. But please toast to each other, thank each other, and remember that we're all together in one, and one in the Nembutsu. Thank you very much.